Okay guys, so big video we have here, um, as you can see by the title, this is going to be my official predictions for the HWC 2017. I'm going to be going through all the pools, show stats and reasoning behind some of my decisions, and also I'll be drawing up a little uh, mock bracket at the end just to kind of see how things might flow. Uh, I want to keep things in this style just so we can kind of focus on numbers more than me just sitting talking in front of a camera. Uh, you may be wondering why I have some things set up the way they are. Uh, all will be explained, but uh, for now I just want to focus on the pools, and with that said, let's just start off right off the bat with the juggernaut that is Pool A. Um, so while it's safe to assume that Optic will get first with ease in this pool, I do find it very interesting how uh, crowd pleasers have been doing pretty well in the scrims recently. Uh, they were able to beat straight Liquid and even Optic themselves pretty significantly in the last few days, with only Envy being sort of their bane to their success. So an obvious bad matchup for them there. Uh, in terms of Optic versus CP, I think uh, if there were to be like a gargantuan upset this weekend, this would probably be the one. In the end, I think it would only light a fire under Optic for them to destroy the competition the rest of the tournament. But uh, anything's possible. Uh, based on performance, Supremacy looks to be the second best EU team in the tournament, but uh, they haven't been really looking too hot in scrims lately, and, and while LAN is a different animal, I don't think we'll be seeing much out of them here. For the sake of keeping things realistic, I have Optic taking the pool, with CP taking the series over Supremacy. Now, uh, moving on to Pool B, uh, it's a pool that I originally thought would be a little bit more closely knit. I say this mainly due to Luminosity, being unable to scrim since Friday, that being due to uh, Ninja being away at an H1Z1 event and having quite an internet fiasco too. Uh, team Liquid is also just not a simple get by team too, they've proven to be the second best team in the league right now, and honestly with the lack of practice that LG has had, uh, granted we'll have to see how they kind of uh, look in these next two days because I am recording this a few days before the event, but even with that I think it's pretty safe to assume that Liquid will be taking the match over them. But, uh, you know, anything's possible. We might see another upset like we saw last year of Renegades and EG. A lot of people thought that EG was the second best team back then. And hey, Liquid is the second best team presumably right now as well. So, you know, crazy world of Halo, anything can happen. But I think uh, just to keep things realistic, we'll have Liquid winning that match. Uh, London Conspiracy has been looking to be a little bit better online. I can see them maybe taking a game off LG. Uh, but honestly, I think that's pretty much to their ceiling. Now with Group C, uh, normally I'd say that Splice has the opportunity to pull an upset here over Envy, and uh, they definitely do, but things aren't looking as realistic at the moment considering that Envy actually beat them in a scrim the other day, 13 to 0. Uh, majority of the game's not being too close either. Of course, you know, it's just online, but Splice, if anything, have been looking better online than on LAN. So it's, it's really a head scratch on how these guys are going to kind of show up this event. Are we going to have the Splice at Las Vegas who lost to LG 4-1? to Are we going to have the Honeymoon Period Splice where they look like a top 3 team? Honestly, I hate to kind of put them on a low bar here, but uh, they really do have yet to prove themselves as a team. And uh, for that reason, I'll have to go with Envy here. And on top of that, Envy has been looking really good recently, winning pretty much all their scrims in the recent days. Uh, with no major offense to immunity, I still see Splice taking uh, the series over them. Uh, finally, we have the last group, the uh, Straight Gate Conspiracy group, as many <laughs> may like to call it. Uh, many people say this due to the accusation that Shirt Rippin was given an easier pool on the account of ESL members who also happened to uh, own parts of Shirt Rippin. Now, uh, there was quite a strife in the forums too, as it came to notice that members of the ESL staff who may have any ties or connections, uh, that also including siblings while in competition, would be ineligible to compete. Uh, this, of course, crossing paths with Ace and Elamite. At the end of the day, I don't think it would be fair to the players of Straight Ripping to deem them ineligible to compete, but I also think that the whole seeding portion is being blown a bit out of proportion. Sure, you have the possibility of matching into an easier pool early on, but you're most likely going to be facing a top NA team round 1 anyway, so things will even out. Uh, APG also made a post in the forums proving that the seeding was correct and how Straight should have the 4th seed and not crowd blazers, uh, which they claim to do so. In this matter, the point accumulations do make sense on average placings, but uh, the manner in which seedings were kind of determined for Worlds is still a bit sketchy. There were even more head scratches after this graphic was released by ESL showing an Optic logo concealed underneath straight ribbons, uh, showing that they should have been in a pool, but uh, they weren't. And yes, this was official too. It was quickly deleted and then replaced right afterwards. And also, if I remember correctly in the past, 
Uh, the Vegas event was originally held to determine seeding for Worlds. I'm pretty sure that was the reason for the tournament, but uh, maybe that's just me. Anyways, I'm moving a bit off topic, but some people just brought it to my attention to share it, and overall, I'd love to hear your opinions on all of it. Personally, I don't see it being that much of an issue, but some points definitely raise some question marks. Anyways, for the pool, uh, it's funny because I think it's actually a very dangerous pool for shirt ripping. I think uh, people might be undermining how good of a team Fabi is. And, uh, you know, they're undeniably the number one team in Europe right now, winning pretty much every major land thrown at their faces in a pretty significant margin. Uh, an EU team beating an NA team isn't impossible. We've seen it in the past with Epsilon, where they beat Renegades at X Games, and they also beat Cloud9 at last year's World to make it into bracket play. So anything is possible. I definitely see this matchup within the realm of upset territory, but I also think that Straight will still manage to clutch it out. Um, I have them going through as first, uh, Fabi second, and Soar third. Soar being, if people are unaware, the uh, Shock the World team just rebranded. Alright, so we have our pools. Um, moving away from that, people might be wondering, okay, like, what's next? Uh, unlike the disaster that was last year, this year we're getting a full double elimination bracket, including all the 12 teams from pool play, meaning essentially pool play was for seeds, for the most part. Uh, the top two teams will be rewarded a position in the winner's bracket, while the uh, bottom team in each pool will be placed in losers round one. Now, even if the pool positions that I have here that I predicted came out exactly as I had just explained it, uh, the final bracket might still be a little bit different because everything's being randomized. If you didn't know, last year basically what they did is that they had the teams that placed first in each of the pools, they had them all seated as first to fourth, and the teams that placed second in the pool seated uh, fifth to eighth. What this meant is that, let's say, like in this case, let's say Optic's the first seed, right? Uh, they pretty much had the same seed as Straight Rippin' since they also got first in their pool. Now ESL hasn't released how exactly they intend to randomize the bracket, but assuming that they keep the system from last year, I thought it'd be pretty fun to sort of simulate a bracket live right now. So um, as you can see in this little rundown I have here, this is basically how the seeds would be determined in the cases that I predicted. Just to get the ball rolling, uh, we'll take the top four seeds and just place them right into the randomizer. Uh, this being random.org if you're unaware. And uh, just hit randomize. And as you can see, this is a result that we have. So uh, what does this mean, right? Well, in case you didn't know, this is basically how uh, a double elimination bracket is structured. So in this case, I would just replace the top four teams in the order in which they appear. Now I'm simply just going to repeat the process for 5th 8 and uh, just randomize this, and this is the result we got here. In this case, I would just have uh, Luminosity taking 5th seed, Splice taking 6th, uh, Crowdboosters 7th, and so on. And uh, with that done, this is basically what our mock winner's bracket looks like. I'll be getting to the loser's bracket in a second, but for now I just want to focus on these first round matches. Obviously a lot to talk about here, we have the first match being Envy versus Fab. Now, have these teams played or scrimmed before in the past? No, they have not, so we really don't have much to go off here. But uh, just considering how well Envy has been doing recently, and uh, I guess just how unsampled information we have about how the EU scene is this year compared to the NA scene, I'm gonna have Envy taking this match. I think uh, probably Fab has the potential of taking a game off. Also, these uh, series will be best of sevens, uh, pool play matches being best of fives, if you didn't know that. Uh, moving on, we have Optic versus Luminosity. Okay, so now just based on matchup history, uh, these teams have faced once before in a scrim, that ending in a 7 0 result on favoring Optic. Now, I think it's pretty hard to assume that the uh, results of this would reflect the scrim results and be a blowout, but uh, I still think that Optic is here to prove something, just to uh, defend their title as world champions. So I do think it's uh, pretty safe to assume that they would win this series. If this matchup would have happened, I'd have uh, LG going up 2-0 and then just, you know, waiting for Optic to kind of kick in and then they would uh, sort of take off where they are. Uh, moving down, we have Liquid versus Splice. This is actually a very, very good matchup for Splice. You might be thinking like, okay, Splice, they got 13 0 by Envious, right? Well, Halo is you know, a game of which team is better, but it's also a game of matchups. And uh, Liquid is actually not as bad as a matchup for Splice and Envious. It's actually a lot better. They beat uh, Liquid in scrims a few weeks ago. I believe uh, it was 10 to 2, was it 10 to 2? Uh, it was 11 to 2 actually, and uh, recently Liquid beat them 8 to 5. Uh, it's still relatively close. So honestly, this is sort of a toss up. I still think that Liquid have proven 
to be the second best team in the league right now. I think what it really boils down to is uh, what sort of splice we get. I still think that just being a realistic sort of person that a uh, liquid would take this series but I think I have a feeling if this were to happen splice would give them a run for their money. Just to keep things a little bit fun let's just say that splice and liquid go to last map uh, liquid advancing there. Okay so next we have oh my god this is a funny match uh, straight ripping versus crowd pleasers. Now this is the definition of a grudge match. Oh god. Okay so just as I mentioned earlier we have the whole straight gate situation. A lot of people on crowd police just being very upset that they got the seed that they did for pool play. They think that straight should have gotten uh, their pool that they replaced in with optic. Now, if you didn't know, this matchup actually happened at Vegas, and I believe crowd police has won that uh, 4 to 2. It might have been 4 to 3. I'm not a guy too keen on karma, but just seeing how kind of things have been unfolding in the league so far. I don't see it being impossible for crowd pleasers to take this series. But you know, that's just my you know off the head thoughts. Let's look at the stats, right? We have straight ripen. They haven't been looking too hot in scrims lately. They actually lost the crowd pleasers themselves, uh, four to one. Now, this isn't uncharacteristic of straight ripen actually. They don't perform well online at all. But uh, they still know when to show up in tournament play. Crowd pleasers on the other hand, uh, before Vegas they were actually doing pretty average in scrims. And more recently, they've been doing very, very good. You know, who's to say that that doesn't translate to them being better on land and a better crowd police is against uh, an average, if not a little bit better short ripping? I would say that crowd police still takes his match. So for that reason, I'm gonna have them advancing forward. I'm gonna say straight takes them uh, the same series as last time, ending four to two. All right, so we have a round one, right? Uh, let's move down to the loser's bracket. Now, I will have the seating arrangements here because I know uh, loser's bracket for double elimination is a little bit less of common knowledge to people. But uh, this is basically how it's set up. We have the loser of these matches, which are listed above. I have them labeled as A, B, C, and D here facing uh, the bottom four teams on each of their respective pools from before. And that'll be the first match of loser's round one. Now, just to keep the tradition with the randomizer, going to be uh, highlighting the bottom four teams that I predict to come out of the pools and put them into the randomizer and let's randomize. So in this case I'll just replace one with nine, uh, two with ten and so on. I'm not going to replace the matches that we have from the winner's bracket into losers. Alright and this is basically what the bottom half of our bracket looks for now. I think uh, the top three of these matches here be pretty easy relatively for each of the NA teams to get by. Of course, no offense to the teams. A loser of A at the bottom, uh, interesting match we have uh, personally what I think are the top two EU teams right now. But you also have to remember that the number one EU team is significantly better than the other teams in the same circuit. So for that reason, I see London Conspiracy taking maybe a game or two off of Fab Esports. But uh, I think that Fab is going to get by them pretty easily. Now moving on, this is for top six now. They're fighting for top six. Um, straight Rippin versus Splice. Okay, so in terms of matchups, uh, Straight Rippin is actually a pretty uh, even matchup for Splice online. But uh, you gotta put an asterisk there because Straight Rippin is a team not known to do very well against any team online. And the fact that they kind of break even with Splice is a little bit scary for them. Like this is a Straight Rippin that lost 12 to 1 to Team Liquid. Uh, 11 to 2 to Optic, 7 to 0 to Envy. This matchup actually did happen in the past before. It's funny. This happened in, uh, I believe, uh, it was St. Louis. It actually went all the way to the last map, and uh, Straight ended up winning, I believe, by three or two kills at the end. Very, very hype match. And I think it was, I don't remember, I think it was a reverse sweep, too. I think uh, just what my gut is telling me here that Straight Rippin will be uh, taking this one. Which is sort of sad to see just because uh, I would have liked, of course it's not official, but I would have liked to have the Splice versus Crowd Pleasers matchup. Again, that being probably the biggest grudge match of the tournament possible in my opinion. Just because we have the whole Kratos versus Shooter and Boo Boo seating situation all in one match for Worlds. Like this is the tournament where it all goes down and matters. So I think just to see that matchup, if we get that matchup in Worlds, that, that would be amazing to watch. And then we have Luminosity versus Fab Esports. Honestly, I could see this going either way. But uh, LG, they've proven to be a pretty formidable team, even with the lack of practice. Again, we'll have to see how they actually uh, perform in the next few days. I don't think that they'll be going out here either. Uh, so we're pretty much done on here. We're going to move up to the winner's bracket again. We have Envy versus Optic. Okay. Now, this is the grudge match, right? This is like the El Clasico, quote unquote. All right, so what do we have here, right? Well, we have 
I would say actually a much harder match to predict. I only say this because Envy has actually been looking very, very good recently. They've beaten pretty much everyone in scrims in like the last pretty much week. Yeah, even Optic themselves. They beat uh, Slim Margin 7-6 to six, and every other team they beat by a pretty significant margin. I'll be honest with you, I don't think that we'll be seeing the same Envy that we saw the last two tournaments. I really think that this time that they're really going to put a stance against Optic. I'm going to be a little bit ballsy here. I'm going to say that Envy wins the match for semis. Moving down, we have Liquid versus Crowd Pleasers. Now, a little bit of a grudge match here because we have the Kratos versus Stellar matchup. This matchup actually did happen before. It happened in Vegas, and Liquid won pretty easily. They won uh, four to zero. If I'll say anything, Crowd Pleasers has been looking better, but Liquid hasn't been really looking worse either. And I think just the matchup is pretty bad for them, just based on you know previous history. So I'll say that crowd pleasers will take two games off, but uh, I'll say that Liquid will still hold their own here. Moving down to the losers bracket again, Optic versus Straight Rippin, right? This matchup has happened before. It happened at Vegas. Optic won pretty handedly, four to zero. It really wasn't close at all. I think if we were to see this matchup, I don't think it'd be very uh, different from what we saw last time. So I still think that Optic would win this. I have them winning four games to one. Then we have Crowd Pleasers versus Luminosity. LG did beat Crowd Pleasers back in St. Louis. They beat them, I believe, three to one. But uh, that was the Crowd Pleasers with Nemesis, and then they picked up the Noxide, and as we all saw, they were a much different team. Crowd Pleasers again have been looking a lot better in scrims recently and LG they haven't been practicing at all. I think uh, just in terms of how things look for now in terms of what I can see online I think it's pretty safe to assume that their tournament run would end here. It would be nice though just for the uh, whole revenge sake that Ninja and Victory X would get their revenge on Nated and Kratos from last year's Worlds since they got reverse swept. That was actually very heartbreaking watching but um I think uh, Crowd Pleasers would win this one. Moving to the winner's bracket, winner's finals, we have Envy versus Liquid. This uh, matchup happens pretty much every tournament, I think. The last two times, Liquid pretty much handled Envy. Last scrim, they had uh, Envy beat Liquid 6-3. I just want to look a little bit back to see how Envy performed against them in the past. Okay, they beat Liquid 3-1. to uh, They beat Liquid 9-4. to And they beat... Okay, so pretty much in any case, Envy has beaten Liquid online. And I think just even with this trend continuing, I feel like Liquid is just that team that knows how Envy plays. And even with Envy playing as good as they are recently, I think that uh, this matchup will go in Liquid's favor, just based on matchup history. So, <laughs> Crowd Pleasers versus Optic. Now, this uh, matchup actually happened in pool play too. I think this match, if this happens, it's going to be a much different match from the actual... Uh, pool play match and I think just playing off of how Kratos and Native play on momentum trains if they beat Luminosity in a sort of like sweeping manner that this will bring them out like full force firing against Optic a sort of damaged Optic too who lost against uh, I have them losing against Envy pretty much their arch nemesis in the winner semis will I say that Optic will lose the crowd pleasers I won't but um I think that if it does happen this matchup does happen this late in the tournament that is going to be ridiculously close and a lot of emotion will be in it from both sides. Moving on to the losers finals which would be the rematch NV versus Optic. This is going to be a much different match because if Optic wins their match against crowd pleasers you're going to have a deflated NV losing a match against Liquid. I think uh, this is going to be a steamroll by Optic uh, and that leaves us to the uh, grand finals we have Optic versus Liquid. I think uh I mean, it's almost telling, you know, Optic versus Liquid has happened the last two tournaments too. St. Louis is very close, uh, Vegas not as close, anything's possible, but I think that Optic will retain their title again this year, and they'll take down Liquid in two best of sevens. So that does it for my mock bracket, the exact placings I have right here. Uh, they're gonna start pool play all throughout Friday. Saturday is when the main double elimination bracket starts. I think this world is going to be a much different world than last year. I think a lot of teams are more closely knit than they were before. I'm going to be making some highlight videos as I did before my previous videos. So uh, keep an eye out for those. But uh, yep, with all that said, I think I got pretty much every point I wanted to get across. Um, I'll see you guys next time. It's going to be a crazy weekend, guys.